Hello everybody and welcome back to the Weeb Family Basement. We are the Weeb Family. We're a lot like your family, except for we actually remember when Mother's Day happens. So if you're watching this right around the time it gets published, which I think is May 8th, 2023. I don't know. I should have looked at the calendar, but whatever. The Tuesday before Mother's Day, the year of our Lord, 2023 is when this is dropping. So you got a few days. If you're watching this in the future, call your mother immediately and tell her you love her because you already forgot Mother's Day. You and I both know <laughs> that that's what happened. Okay. So uh, we're here to celebrate the top five kick-ass manga moms of all times and universes. I don't know if I use kick ass as my word, but best well, whatever. moms. You got to put some spice on it to keep the viewers interested. I got to teach you how to YouTube here. Yeah, I'm not a Yeah. You you don't you, you don't know how to overhype things. I don't. So, that's why we're here. We're going to talk about uh, manga moms. And this is the hardest top 5 list I've ever done. Because there is not enough hashtag mother representation. There is not. Like, mother representation is mm -hmm. very limited. Yeah. Like, well, first of all, a lot of protagonists, their parents are just not in the scene. Yes. And we, sister-in-law Weeb, who is uh, Japanese, fresh off the boat from Tokyo, we asked her one time if that's like a thing. And she said, no. The kids in high school don't randomly live in their own apartments while <laughs> their family is overseas. She says that is not a thing. That is only in uh, manga and anime. So, no absentee mothers on this list. Yeah. No. Actually, I think I have one. But that's yeah. okay. Well, I'll get to it. There's I'll get some to in it. my stories, but they're not yeah. the main. Uh... Yeah. So, uh, before we go too much further, we want to remind everybody that uh, send the like button a Mother's Day card, but when it opened up the envelope, there should be nothing in it. So oh. if you dislike this video, send the like button a Mother's Day card, but no card inside the envelope, and make sure you're subscribed so that way you never miss an important holiday because Father's Day is next month and you don't want to miss that. I know <laughs> your dad went out to get a pack of cigarettes and never came back, but you should still... Milk. No, uh, yeah, because anti-smoking has become such a thing in the U.S., we changed an entire idiom from my dad went out to get a pack of smokes and never came back to my dad went out to get some milk. You know, in some ways that's almost worse because mm. milk sounds like I'm going out to get something for my kids, mm. whereas going out to get a pack of cigarettes is purely selfish to begin with. That's true. That's true. I don't know. You bring up some good points. But... Uh, <laughs> So yeah, subscribe to the channel, follow us on social media. The only one that really matters is Instagram. But if you want to follow us on Twitter for if, when the regime change happens, we will uh, go back to <laughs> Maybe. There. Maybe. I'm going to phrase it like I hate Elon, and that's why I'm not on Twitter, to obfuscate from the fact that I'm old and don't understand Twitter, and that's why I don't use it. The formatting on Twitter, I, I don't know. I don't get it. Yeah. It's not intuitive. Yeah. I, you got to be a Zoomer to understand Twitter. Anyway, so I guess we'll go ahead and get started. It seems like our tradition for top five lists is we start off with rules because we make up arbitrary yeah, rules. Yeah, we make up our own rules. <laughs> but I, I, I sometimes I think they're important. Well, because if you don't have rules, it gets very, like, how do you narrow it when down? When you don't have rules, you get dumb fucks trying to say that cereal is soup. Or that a taco is a sandwich. Like, yeah, yeah. that's why we gotta have rules here, okay? Or that, what is it, V8 is a uh, fruit drink? That's what I'm saying. That's why you gotta have rules. Because you get these, um, actuallys trying to come in here with their corner cases. And I've been known to um actually, so you <laughs> yeah, <know>. you think. <laughs> but we only had one main rule this time around, which is they have to be a mother or a mother figure for a significant portion of the story. That was the main rule. Yeah. So, for example, this did not make the list, but Kari Kano, the main girl, becomes a mom at the end. 
We've already spoiled well, that. There's, well, there's a lot of stories where well, right, they get married yeah. and, oh, here's a scene where they yeah. have children. And it's just like, that's not being a mom in the story. Right. So we said for a decent amount of the story. not the, It doesn't have to be the entire story, but for a decent amount of story, they had to have been a mother mm-hmm. or a mother figure. Mm-hmm. So, though I personally saved the mother figures for honorable mentions. I wanted to keep it pure mothers for the list. But that was me. That was my own thing. I know you do. See, people like, like, you always get concerned that our lists are different, but people like the yeah. different. Well, I... It's I, like going to a Chinese buffet. They get some <laughs> sweet and sour chicken, and they get some jalapeno chicken. All you know, right. You get, you get both. But I gave myself some other rules. It's mm-hmm. not just that yes. they are mother for the the mm-hmm. full thing. Mm-hmm. They have to, one, love their children. Because I feel <laughs> like there's a lot of... No, there's a lot of stories where the moms don't like kids. But See, they wouldn't like, have made the list then. No, no. There's some badass moms out there. Sure. They've had children, but they don't really take care of but their kids. Then, but then they're not going to be on... They're still best. a mom, though. Uh, yeah, but they're not going to make the top five list. Okay. I'm just saying. They got to actually care about their kids. Like, right. you can also say, like... There's a mom who's like, like very like strict or something. Michael they, Jackson has a dad, but you would never put him on the list of best dads. I'm just saying that there are moms out there who you could argue that are trying their best, but it doesn't really feel like the caring they're, they're, comes they're, across. Uh, they're Johnny Lawrencing up the Maybe, situation. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, then I was also like, uh, now you made me lose track on my list here. I don't know. I told it to you. Um. Oh, well, one of the ones that was very important to me, which was my third one, I can't remember what my second one was, but she has to be something other than just a mom, too. Mm. Like, she has to, like, oh, have yeah. a this, bit this, of a life. This is how you made me do a last-second change uh, on, well, on cause my like, list. Okay, if you're just concentrating on being a mom, that's very one-dimensional, but mm. women who are mothers are not one-dimensional. There are mm. more sides to them than just being a mom. Mm. And so I felt that was important in picking, like, a mom figure. Mm-hmm. So, I, don't know. I can't remember what my second one was, though. I don't, I don't, I don't remember. Um, well, you made me lose oh, the train of thought. I so. remember that they actually like support and fight for their children in the story because there's a mm-hmm. lot of good moms that are just like background characters. They're mm-hmm. not really yes. part of the story. So, yeah, you made me change. I had Mrs. Ichinose. On the top of my uh, honorable mentions. Yeah. But then you were talking to me just before we recorded and you were saying all your criteria. And I was like, yeah, Mrs. Ichinose might be a good mom, but she's just in the background and and teasing Godai. Like, that's all she does. And honestly, I mean, I like her as a character, but there were many times where she was far more concerned with gossip than what her kid was doing. Yeah. Which was funny. Yeah. Very funny. But Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, we will go ahead and dive in here, but there is one super last thing. Look, well, let's just acknowledge that number zero on this list is mommy weeb. So I don't need everyone in the comments being like, oh, my favorite manga mom is mommy weeb. Flattery will get you nowhere. Just stop typing that right now. I already know you people are. But he totally wants you to type that when we do dads. Well, of course. Yeah. (laughs) Because some things go without saying, but some things need to be shouted at, out at the rooftop, <laughs> obviously. So we'll go ahead and get started here. And since it's uh, Mommy's Day, okay, you can go, go first. first. Well, part of the problem that we had mm-hmm. was moms don't typically make it to covers either. Yeah, so <laughs> I'll be providing some thumbnail pictures on top of the books here. Mm-hmm. Some of the books will have... The, our picks on the covers and some won't. Mm-hmm. We're working with what we have here, people. So my first pick, which would be number five, mm-hmm. is from Emma. Yep. Um, this is not the mom, though, but it's mm-hmm. the closest. The I'm going for more of the mom figure in this, which is Kelly uh, Stowiner. She was the woman who took Emma in as a child. Mm-hmm. And yes, Emma was her maid, But it really did, it really was more like a mother-daughter situation Mm -hmm. of kind of raising this orphan girl off the street to be a respectable person who could have a job Mm -hmm. once she's gone and all that kind of stuff. But on top of that, there are other good mothers in the story. Um, There's Mrs. Jones. (laughs) Now, I think people would think that she's not that great of a mother because Mm -hmm. she left her kids, but at the same time, 
she was a mom that was willing to let her kids be who they wanted to be in this Victorian era where everyone else was really strict. I love um, Dorothea, which is, she's right here and she's a mom, but honestly, she's more uh, the best wife character in the story, but because there's not a lot of interaction with the children with her. So as I was picking out uh, characters who were good mothers I found that if you have a good mother in a story you typically have other really good female characters in the story as well Mm -hmm. and so that's that's kind of how Emma is like all of the female characters are really good Mm -hmm. all of the the mother characters um while being a mother may be their main Mm -hmm. you know character trait they're more than just that in the story which is really good and going back to Kelly, I'm sure, Doctor Betchel will be very happy about mm-hmm. that. Yeah. But the thing about Kelly that really stands out to me is that, she, again, she didn't adopt Emma or anything like that, but she really became this like guiding uh, force in Emma's mm-hmm. life to get her on a good track into the world. So even if she never met. Um, I can't even think of his first name, but the Jones character that she fell in love with, she would have the skills to make it in life. And that's like a a thing, you know, moms are really concerned with that my kids can, you know, go out into the world, be productive people, take care of themselves so that they're, you know, they're not reliant on other people. And so the, the Kelly character, um, you know, she, I I don't know. I, she struck me as like a really good mother figure. As you said, you didn't want that in your top. I say those for the honorable mentions. But I felt like that, I don't know, out of my honorable mentions, I felt like she was... I have biology privilege. (laughs) I, out of my, like, when you go to my honorable mentions, I think the difference with the Kelly figure compared to my honorable mentions is that um, the care in guiding the, Mm. the child character is really important. So, I like that. That's why I picked that. Okay. Any, any other thoughts on the awesome moms of Emma? No, but that's mostly about it. Kelly. Kelly. No, just Kelly. Or last name you couldn't pronounce. Stoner. 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 She Anyways, likes to fortune. but yeah, she was married, but then her husband died, so she never had any children, and so that's mm. why taking yeah. Emma in was kind of quick like question fulfilling that mother. If it were more available, would you say this is a great recommendation? as a gift to give a mother. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Because it, it this sounds... is, okay. So when you talk about moms now, mm. I'm a mom. I know my own mom. I know my grandma, like historical fiction mm. where there's romance involved seems to be very popular. Mm. That is definitely what's going on here. Historical fiction mm. with uh, romance, with very, uh, strong female characters, even though, again, you're in this Victorian era where they are constrained by the world they live in, they are still, like, strong as they can be independent women in the time era with the, with mm-hmm. with what they live. So that makes them very interesting characters to me. All right. So we'll move on to my number five. Technically a grandmother, but to be a grandmother, you have to first be a mother, so it counts. I think grandmothers count because yeah. there's a, even in in a family where a mother is involved, mm-hmm. grandmother tends to be yeah. a big part of the family and will you know. Yeah, but grandmothering is just mothering too. So you you had, you had to complete the prerequisite. <laughs> I mean, kind to, of to get there. So it it's counts. like a second a second stage mothering. Exactly, it's the second quest. Okay, <laughs> but we've got Seiko Ayase from. Don, don, don. I mean, she barely just made the list, but she's super cool. Like, I, I've i always said that Don to Don's peak mediocrity, the characters are where this book shines, not the demon slang or anything else. Uh, but she's great. I love that she makes fun of idols live on TV. She always has something quirky to say, and she's totally a gilf. So, she, you know, she's great. the young grandma. Yeah. So it's like... Her characteristics. She's the young grandma, like Lauren Boebert. <laughs> okay, we're, we should stay away from that. <laughs> oh, come on. That was a funny joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a funny joke. But no, so she's a yeah. young grandmother, which makes her interesting in the mm-hmm. sense that, like, uh, she, she's not the stiff, 
Mm -hmm. I mean, she's wise because she's older and she knows sure, what's going sure. on, but she's not the like elderly, oh, I can't, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm so full of wisdom and people come to me and like, no, I'm going to smack my grandkid up the head if they're doing something stupid, mm -hmm. which is kind of fun in, in the sense of the story. Yes. Uh, I couldn't put her up higher because I'm only two volumes into this series, but what I've read, she's great. And due to limited choices in the pool, she made, but you know what? So she might have, she might have made it in anyway. She's a great she, character. Well, she was on my um, honorable mention list, but I wanted to keep it to three, so mm. she was my cutoff. Oh, uh, she had a cutoff. Yeah. 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 Well, the, she she was your Mrs. Ichinose. Kind of. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Let's switch them out. And remember, if we're careful, we can. Not <laughs> uh, I will not be careful. Either. I know. Well, it's hard. Well, you're going from a thick old baby to a smaller yeah. one. I'm going from a small one to a thick old baby. Boom. So hopefully that scene. Yeah, hopefully. Well, we don't want to be too polished. That upsets our viewers. Apparently. So. <laughs> All right, your number four pick. So we have uh, your from Spy Family. Mm -hmm. um, a clearly a not another biological mother at this point. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe legally adopted, kind of, well, sort of. Well, I mean clandestinely uh, adopted. Let me put it this way. There are going to be documents to say that she mm -hmm. has adopted yeah. Anya. So, I so mean, you know, from a legal standpoint, if it can get past a judge, it works. There you go. Yeah. But no, I think what makes her a good mom is mm -hmm. um, her effort. Mm -hmm. Like, her character, while assassinating people, comes so naturally. Mm. Being a mother does not come naturally to her. Sure. But she wants to put in all of the effort that she has mm -hmm. to, you know, really raise Anya. She cares about Anya. She cares about, you know, mm -hmm. what Lloyd wants in the family. She's she's very devoted to this role of playing the wife and mother, mm -hmm. um, but not in a way that's fake. So... You know, she she teaches Anya the things that she knows. Um, like, she was even teaching her best friend, you know, self-defense moves and all this kind of stuff. And so I just, what I like about her being a mother is that, like, she her, her character, which it can't be with how the story is written, she's not just a mother. She's an assassin and a mother. Mm -hmm. So... There's like two sides to herself, which I know a lot of moms can feel that way. They're like, oh, I'm a mom. I take care of kids. But I have also have this other side to myself that my kids don't necessarily even know. Like mm -hmm. all mothers have parts of themselves that they're not sharing with their kids. So mm -hmm. this takes that drama of not sharing every part of yourself with your kid like up to like 12. So I think that's kind of interesting that way. Yeah, it's a great pick. She's also smoking hot, so you got the the milf thing, you know. Which I didn't on. ask you about, Don to Don. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend that for mothers to read? Oh, probably not. Probably not. I don't know. I don't know if I would recommend that for moms to read. I just think it depends on how old oh, your mom is. I that was a just so we're clear. That was a question unique to Emma. I didn't plan on. No, this I know, but oh, it made okay. me think about it. Like, would okay. you recommend it to your mom? I don't know if I'd recommend this to my mom. I think um, she might be like, oh, that's interesting, but it wouldn't be enough to, to carry her forward to, re to, to read more or watch more. I got one last thing to add to Spy Family, sure. but I'm going to circle back to it. Or no, I'm going to say it, and then I'm going to use your thing about mothers to segue into my pick. Okay, go right ahead. So... Yor is a great mother figure because she loves Anya more than our viewers' mothers love them. And that's why people like Spy Family so much. Because it's the family they wish they had. And they get pissed off because they have a biological family and they don't. But yet theirs is more loving. It, you know, it, is, it is frustrating when you look mm, at it that way. Like yeah. they seem like the... And it's not just that they appear to be in a loving family, because mm -hmm. like that's their goal is to have yeah. that outward appearance yeah. of being a loving family. But they are. But they are. Like yeah. they're not they're not even actually legally obligated mm -hmm. to be a loving family, and it, yet they it, care about it, each it's other. It's almost like it's almost like uh Tatsuya Endo saw uh what was that one movie with Jennifer Aniston and that one dork and they have to pretend to be a family to, to Oh, I know drugs. which one you're talking about, but I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. That's like Tatsuya Endo saw that and it's like, I want to do one better. 
But the I'm going to make a loving family yeah, out of this. Like I'm going to take strangers and make them love each other. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know. Anyway, uh, funny enough, because you you asked like you know about recommending this to mothers. Mm-hmm. Uh, my next pick is Kiriko Endo from uh, 20th Century Boys. But what's funny is your mom might watch the movies of this, mm-hmm. not because I would recommend them. <laughs> but because my brother You're would? Your brother. Like, you don't understand. Bro- uh, I guess brother weave, brother-in-law weave. He's your brother. Yeah. Uh, he hates anime. Generally speaking. He, he unless it's, stu- it's Studio Ghibli, yeah. which is not even... Re- it, it's only real anime it's because real it's... not real anime. It's only real anime because it's of definitions, that it's animation from Japan. But Studio Ghibli fucking sucks. I don't care. Hit that dislike button. Fuck you. Then that is not the opinion of myself and daughter. Yeah, no, y'all love Studio Ghibli. I, I hate it. But anyway, uh, other than Studio Ghibli, he hates anime, but somehow goes to Japan all the time and married a girl from Japan. You don't have to love Japan and go to Japan and also love anime. Yes, you do. Anyway, <laughs> and one time on a flight to Japan... They played the live action version of 20th Century Boys. And your brother, when he came back, would not shut up about it. He bought all the DVDs yeah. and everything. He didn't get the manga, though. But, no. like, he is, like, such a, uh evangelical for this story that I think he had your mom watch part of it one time when we were he over there. He gets a lot of people to watch things they're not really interested in. Yeah. So... I don't know if that answers your question, whether your mom would like this, but your mom has been exposed to it <laughs> because of your brother and not because of me. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's it's, it's a good, funny story. Anyway. Yes. So Kiriko Endo. Uh, I have to be careful because this is on Mommy Weeb's uh, do reading list. I need to list. Like, plug my ears? I don't know. Let me see if I can do this. Like, She comes in at number four. Like, some people be, might be like, oh, well, she's so awesome. She does something super amazing at the end, right? Which is true. Like, she's a critical character to the story and the events and everything. But up until then, she is nowhere. She fucks a cult guy, gets knocked up. Oh, jeez. Like, oh, this is like in the first... Oh, okay. First omnibus or whatever. Like, sorry, th- this progresses over like 20 years and the first time you meet, uh, the, oh, sh- I forgot the daughter's name, but like her daughter is like a BB. And then the main character, uh, Kenji, like carries her, carries her around. Like, what was that one movie, The Hangover with the baby? The baby. Like yeah. he's doing all that. Like we know from the beginning that her mother is like absent or whatever. And So her, she starts out as absent mother. Kind of. And that we know that her father is a cult leader, you know, mm. so that's great. Um, but again, she redeems herself at the end. And it's not that. She never didn't love her daughter. It's that I got knocked up by a crazy cult guy and I'm on the run for my life. Well, you know? I would, you look, out of, you know, I was mm. thinking about this as I was picking mm. best mothers. It doesn't mean that the mothers are perfect. Like, because sure. I really want it. They're, they're human. They're people. Yeah. They're, they're, they're more three dimensional. Because I feel like mm. if you're picking just quote unquote perfect mothers, you're picking like a two dimensional character, mm. caricature of what a mother is. Sure. Yeah. So if they're completely flawless, is that really like a good portrayal of a mother? Mm. So well, that's, that's fine. For the audience to decide. Well, that is yeah. true. They can make their own minds. So I don't know that I have too much else to add because I can't say too much without spoiling it yeah, for you. I do need to start reading that too. Yeah, yeah I think you're going to like this one. Maybe not as much as your brother, but uh, I think you'll like it. So, are we switching moving it up? on? Yep, we got to be careful. Uh... Ooh, I'm gonna surprise a ton of people with my pick right here. I'm actually gonna put mine up backwards. Yes, makes sense. Yep. Yep. There we are. Though yours probably just overexposes because it's white. Probably. Yeah. Anyway. But if you know. If you know, you know who this is already. Yeah. This is um, Kyoko Honda, who is uh, Toru's mm. mother. Yeah. Um, I'm still surprised. I'm still shocked you never picked Mommy Honda as best mommy. Mommy is not the... Uh, <laughs> it's just a joke. Okay. Let me make jokes. Okay, okay. Anyways, um, she is definitely a character who has her own flaws. Mm-hmm. Um, Toru definitely idolized her as a mom. Mm-hmm. Um, it con- kind of like ignoring her flaws. Because mm-hmm. um, 
the way her story goes is that she's in high school. She falls in love with the teacher. They get oh, inappropriate age gap, inappropriate age gap, inappropriate age gap. They get together. Mm. They have Toru. I want to have like a graphic with sirens. Like, I guess we didn't mm. give like uh, spoilers on these, but I assume. I'm mean. trying to not be too spoilerific. Okay. Well, the the thing that I want to say is if you if you've read this, um, there is a very um, damaging action that she does mm. that gives Toru a bit of psychological scarring. Mm. Mm. Um, and so, but once she, I mean, she went through a battle and once she recognized that she was actually hurting her own daughter with her own, like, I guess, depression, that she was like, I have a daughter. I have a daughter and I have to take care of her. Mm. And so she, that, having the daughter, her daughter, like, and recognizing that her daughter needed it was her. A, uh, come to Jesus moment. Kind of. It yeah. was like, oh, wait, I've left my daughter all alone and I can't leave her all alone. I have to be a mother to her, mm. which then is not. This is not much of a spoiler because if you read like the first chapter, you know that she, she dies. And so the abandonment issues that Toru feels of her from her mother mm. don't come just from her her mother dying, but I guess that's something you learn as the story mm. goes along. And so even though there is the trauma there, I feel like she was a mother who's trying to make up for the damage that she caused when Toru was younger, which I feel like she did in a way, and it would have been even better if she hadn't, because she could have kept growing with Toru and helped her even more and all this kind of stuff. Mm. But you know, death gets in the way of things so i i feel like she was a really good mother character i also want to i like to point out the side mother characters too there was um satsuki soma can't just have one mom no per, per book okay. well it's not it, it, like i said if you have a good mother character in a story mm. there are typically more than one good mother okay. character but satsumi soma i'm letting you cook is um and i can't think of his name now but he's she's the mother of the character who is the ram mm. and sugar ray Remember, I call uh, Shigeru. No, not Shigeru, him. Not him. Shugu Ray. Yeah, he's he's, he's the dog. Ray. But anyways, um, oh, he's definitely because a dog, I mean, because he I'm... is just humping left and right. Wait, can I ask? I I, I seriously have a free okay, question go ahead. for you, and go I'm ahead. sorry for interrupting. Like, sorry, and this might be a little Fruba spoilery, so skip like thirty seconds to a minute. Sugar Ray slept with. The, the the main bad guy Akito right mm. like I'm assuming that he was an adult and Akito was a, a teen so like why does that just like fly under the radar does he ever get his ass beat go to jail I would have to look at the 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 timing on that because I don't mm. know if Akito was an adult at that point uh, I'm assuming not since they start the show or story not being adults and Sugar Ray is. But Akito is older. Oh, I didn't Akito's know Akito's not in high school. Oh, I thought Akito was in high school. No. Oh. So, if at... I don't know when their sexual relationship started, so I, okay. I don't know. Sorry. You... There's more spoilers that are worse than that, so... Oh, I'm sure. I, and I mean, don't spoil it for them. You can spoil it for me. I will never read... I'll Prince spoil Bastard. it for you later, because he... Fine. get He... He... He does like to get his uh, groove on. Let's just yeah. put it that way. Oh, I'm sure. That's why he's my favorite character. <laughs> but, oh, but I guess you could say Fruits Basket is a great example of both good mothers, bad mothers. Mm -hmm. And it really is about, like, uh, generational trauma and how mm -hmm. that re yeah. reflects on the children. You which know, I know you didn't get to that part. And you, you know, they need to start doing, like, uh, Kai versions of other, like, okay, so Dragon Ball Z Kai they took out all the filler of the anime and they tried to make it more like the manga. Mm -hmm. I mean, some filler still made it in, but whatever. They they cut the crap, so to speak. There's lots of manga that need Kai versions. Like, look, Berserk needs a Kai version. You chop off the whole Black Swordsman arc. It was <laughs> awful. Everyone admits it. Everyone's like, it doesn't get good until 
the Golden Age arc. So just start at the Golden Age arc. Just forget the Black Swordsman arc. But the problem so is, is Fruba like, should just drop the first omnibus. It's but terrible. the problem is, is how does Toru get yeah. in that situation? Whatever, you rewrite it. Just rewrite it. <laughs> Do a mulligan. Because, yeah, I know when we talk about, like, mm. the, the generational trauma, you're like, I didn't even get to that part. Yeah. And everyone keeps talking about, like, this is such a great piece. But, like, I'm sorry. If you have to have two omnibuses in to get good, that's too much. It's too much. I ain't no one got time well, for that. Well, I think the idea for Fruits Basket was mm. it was supposed to be a lighthearted high mm. school story that led in, like, slowly led into mm. revealing the lives of these people. Mm. Well, execution. Too slow for you. Execution poorly done, but whatever. <laughs> okay, it's, okay, okay, okay. It's one of the greatest manga on I'm, women's list. Let's move whatever. on because yes. I'm surprised you picked this one. I'm well, very surprised. For, first of all, again, this was an extremely hard list to this put is together. A, it's such a hard list. Like, mothers mm-hmm. are, well, one, they're hard to find. Mm-hmm. And then when you do find them, are they actually really mm-hmm. part of the story? Oh, and before anyone asks, yes, we thought about doing this next month for Father's Day. And just off the top of our Easy. head, Easy. rattling off dads. Like, you could say, yeah. oh, well, all these dads are dead. But there's enough dads around to take kids on crazy adventures. I know. But I also so pointed unfair. out that, like, it seems like in stories... You keep the dad around because the dad will throw the kid up in the air and be like, hey, have a good time. And you're throwing in, you're mm-hmm. having fun. Whereas the mom character is almost always, why'd you just throw my kid into the air? It's gonna, it's dangerous. Don't do that. Like yeah. the mother is there to stop the kids from having fun and doing adventures. So that's why they don't have the mom they're, around. They're all chi chi. Look, yes. But, and I appreciate chi chi as a character because mm-hmm. she clearly put Gohan on the right path. Mm-hmm. And we can get into more of that later if you want to. But, like, she gets she gets drugged too much because she takes the fun out of everything. Mm-hmm. But honestly, like, mothers are there to protect their children. And if they're not protecting... But does she need to protect Gohan? I mean, the kid's, like, this, one of the strongest people on the planet. So mm-hmm. In the universe. In the, in the universe. Like, he doesn't need protection. But she made him into a good dad. Yeah. He might even be the third strongest. And arguably the strongest after the uh, superheroes movie or whatever, mm. but whatever. This is not Dragon Ball talk. Hour. Is, yeah, we, we, we so here's Planetes. why I pick, pick Planetes. And obviously, the character is Fee Carmichael, the ethnically ambiguous character. Oh, yeah, I forgot that she was a mom. Yeah, well, and she's a mom the whole time. I forgot and that. She, yeah. she girl bosses, gatekeeps, and gaslights because she's a fucking astronaut. How awesome is that? Yeah, and she is an eco terrorist, which is kind of sexy if you like the environment. <laughs> if you like that kind of stuff. If you like the environment, and all that. I mean, look, some people hate the environment and love polluting, so you might not like Fee if you're okay. one of those people. But uh, and then on top of that, she starts like a one woman war against uh, space debris. But you're right. When she comes home, mm-hmm. she is almost the quintessential mom figure. Yep. Even though the the husband is home, quote unquote, taking care of the children. Mm-hmm. She is definitely mom-like. Like, she's... Wait, what What are you laughing about now? <laughs> you just... <laughs> it's so true. Like, yeah, when she comes home, she has to be a hard ass. And there's, like, two or three stories where it's her on her downtime. You know, uh, she's gone for months at a time, so that causes drama. And the dad is totally the, the lax one. And, like, the house is a mess. There's dogs that they have issues with and all that. The kids always bring home yeah. animals. Yeah. And it makes me think of our differences in parenting style. Because we joke about this all the time with Daughter Weep. Is that uh, it used to be. So when Daughter was real little, uh, you worked retail. And uh, so you worked a lot of the weekends. And I was a full-time student. And so yeah. I was off on the weekends. And so I would be with daughter you would be the main caretaker over the weekend yeah but i remember (laughs) feedings and you know where this is going (laughs) the difference between moms and dads moms will swaddle the baby support the neck have the bottle going meanwhile daddy weaves over here putting daughter on the couch putting pillows around her so she can't roll off and then putting the bottle on the couch such that like it's holding it up into her mouth so I could go do other things. <laughs> That's bad. But I'm gonna go to the to the to the orange chicken, which oh, is no, I. no, this this no, did, did this not did, happen. It totally happened. Did not happen. I came home from work. No. She's sitting there in her diaper mm-hmm. eating chicken and I'm like, what is she doing? 
orange chicken for Panda Express. This is the only part that we agree on is that she was eating orange chicken for Panda Express. She was in her diaper eating mm -hmm. orange chicken. I'm like feeling her and I'm like, she's hot. Well, she's hot. That's why she should clothes. She's hot because she has a fever. What are you doing? And he's like, I don't know. I just, she said she was hot. So I let her take her clothes off. And I'm just like, well, oh my gosh. what are you supposed to do? Oh my gosh. <sighs> First of all, I deny that this happened the way it has been presented here. Yeah. The only thing that is accurate is that she was eating orange chicken. Mm -hmm. And in her diaper? The way I remember it is she was never sick. And that she was just, it was like a summer day, so she took off her clothes because it was hot outside no. No. and in the house, no. you know, so. No. Okay, no. whatever. But. Uh, Dads and moms. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, she has to be the hard ass when she gets home, but she handles it like a pro and she learns from her kids and their kids learn from her. She's a great pick. I had totally forgot about her. She yeah. might have made my... Uh... Uh, honorable, honorable mention mentions. list if I had remembered. I'd forgotten that she was well, another this figure. Is what, this is why we tag team it, you know? There you go. So, there you go. Moving on. Ooh, yeah, moving on. Ugh. But look, daughter grew up fine. She's mostly. not dead, so. Yeah, everyone knows. We have video proof. Like, last video she joined us. So. Ugh. I keep having these chonky volumes. Yeah, big chonkies. Yep. So, here we go. Our number two picks. So. Wait, I'm going to interrupt you. Yes, again. Again. I probably would have put this character on my list if I had read this. Mm -hmm. Because anyone who deals with a special needs kid deserves to be on a list. I so. mean, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, this is With the Light, uh, Raising an Autistic Child. Um, mm -hmm. Sachiko Azuma starts with her giving birth to a child, finding out that he's autistic. The whole of the story is her being a mother, raising this autistic boy, and not just raising him, but fighting for him, fighting to make sure he has rights, rights in school, mm -hmm. rights in the neighborhood around him. She, There's one scene where, where they're where's like... Where's the daddy at? The dad's there. Okay. And... Um, he didn't GTFO? No, no. Okay. So it is a it is a whole family. You have a mother, mm -hmm. a father, the autistic son, and then later they have another child, a girl. Mm -hmm. um, so it is a whole family, and there is the drama of mothers are typically the first, right? They're the mm -hmm. they're the first when they, when you have a nuclear family like this, they're usually the first to see the child, see the problems, advocate for the problems of the child. So the dad. In the story, he he's like, why don't I have a normal family? Why do I have this autistic son? And there is there they do show arguments between the mother and the father, being like, you know, why? She had her why moments, but she came o overcame them almost immediately because she had to to take care of her son. The father was a little more slow on the uptake, and so there were arguments between the two of them of like, what are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to handle this? Eventually, he was like, no, wait, yeah, this is my son. I need to take care of my son. I need to be a proper mm -hmm. father. He even, like, has arguments with his own mother, the mm -hmm. grandmother, about these kinds of things. So this is definitely family-oriented. It's definitely, like, I, this, she is such a strong mother character that you would... So with Shoujo and Jose, you get a lot of these like light, airy drawings. Mm -hmm. But honestly, like she could almost be drawn as like the most badass person ever because she's so such a strong character and fighting for her son <coughs> and for what he needs in school. And like um, she would see problems and like she wouldn't let it go. Like mm -hmm. she would like it, some of the teachers were not the best teachers. And she would question that. She would go to the schools and she would be like, why are you letting this happen? You know, my son isn't getting the proper treat, you know, mm -hmm. educational care and all this kind of stuff. So when you talk about a mom who cares about their kid, fights for a good future for their kid, but is also like another person, like she does have another, like while the majority of the story is her and her son and making sure her son has what he needs and even like making sure that her children, um, you know, they fight and, you know, dealing with her, the, the younger sibling being jealous and all this kind of stuff. She still has like a, a, a part-time job. So she, she has like another side to her life, even though definitely dealing with her children is her main focus in her mm -hmm. life. So I think 
even though she's quote unquote just a mother, it's not just who she is. It's not like she is much stronger than just a mother. So. And I've said this once. I'm going to say it again. Again, press. What are you doing? This is the most important yeah. book in your catalog that you are not publishing. This, this right really now. should be reprinted. Actually, I would love like a better back. copy because these kind of feel like they're falling apart. Yeah. Well, you've had them forever. Yeah, I got some yellowing and yeah. like this. The glue binding is not the greatest. Yeah. So they need to maybe redo it with a hardcover. I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, my number two is Yeko Nishimiya, which is this girl's mother in a silent voice. And uh, this book has a lot of good moms in it. Uh, but this one stood out just a little bit more. And I forced myself to only pick one mother per book. Um, and here's why I picked her is because she is the mother that I wish I could be like, like, let me rephrase that. It came out awkward. Yeah, it did. She mothers like the dad I wish I could be. That's better. That's better. She mothers like a dad. And what do I mean by that? First of all... Is that condescending? No. Here's how I want to explain why. Because usually most mothers are like, Oh, you're bullying my kid. Can we please stop that? Let me go talk to the principal and see what we can do. No, no, no. Mrs. Nishimiya, she don't play that shit. If you fuck with her daughter, she will rip your fucking earring out of your fucking ear for, you know, so you'll pay for the privilege, okay? And she will straight smack a kid who's bullying her kid. You know how many dads just want to come up and fucking punch the shit out of other little kids because their kids are making fun of their kids? She is badass, okay? And, and... Uh, her husband, boyfriend, whatever, when he found out that, oh, this is slightly spoilery, when she found out that she was deaf, he's just like, I'm stepping out for a pack of cigarettes. And she's like, no, fuck you. Go get your cigarettes. I'm going to raise this child all by myself. And I don't need you because your dick is too small and my balls are bigger than yours. Like, she is badass. That that scene where the family was rejecting mm -hmm. her because she's deaf, Mm -hmm. That was really heartstring pulling, and and yep. you really felt for the mother figure at that mm -hmm. point because she basically her support system because mm -hmm. they didn't talk about her the maternal support system so I'm assuming it wasn't there at all so mm -hmm. all she had was you know the support system on the family father side and they're all basically saying no yep we're not this is our grandchild we don't care yep. And then she was like, fuck you. And then she went and raised a great child. Two great children all by herself. Because yeah. she's badass that way. Mm -hmm. So, yep, that's why I had to pick her. All right. So, anyway, we'll move on to some honorable mentions. How do we want to do this? Do we want to do it like last time where we go back? Or we just want to do it like all three? I don't care. Well, how do you want to do it? I'm giving you the choice. We'll just do all three and then... Yeah, I like that better because it's too much of a pain to put the timestamps yeah, in. Okay. Yeah. Um, so also, take... speaking of recommendations, I would recommend this to moms, but since it's a harder find and whatever. Yeah. But this, I only, think almost only get all moms are like... to your moms if your mom has been super awesome and raised you to be super successful with tons of money and you can overpay for eBay prices, <laughs> then you should get it for your mom. Yeah, but that, that's a really good yeah. recommendation. So... My uh, honorable mention, um, first honorable mention is Bulma. I picked Bulma because starts out single mom. Mm -hmm. Dad clearly is uninterested, which it's like, all right, so she's got to take care of her kid. But it's interesting because she knows her kid's super strong. I mean, he has to be like, I mean, he is essentially from the beginning. So she's not... She's not mothering in the sense where she's overprotective, but she definitely lets Trunks, I mean, especially as you watch through Super, she lets Trunks be who he wants to be, yet she is concerned. Like, it's not like an, she's definitely not an absentee mom. She's not the kind like, oh, I just let my kid go off and have adventures and I don't pay attention. She knows where he's at. She knows what he's doing. She makes sure he goes to school and has lessons and all this kind of stuff. But she doesn't, quote unquote, stand in his way of... Mm -hmm. 
the you opposite mean? of Chi Chi in, in that sense. Well, like Chi Chi is so concerned with making sure that her kid, maybe because Goku is so dumb, well, she wants to make true. sure her kids are smart. Whereas I think Bulma just assumes that if if Trunks is smart, he's going to well, learn the stuff and be well, fine. Let's be fair, okay? I'm going to be as charitable as possible to Chi Chi. Chi Chi didn't get to meet future Gohan. That's true. Before raising Gohan. That is true. Chi Chi I mean, got you to saw, meet Trunks before. You got to see yeah. how badass Trunks was going to be mm. if you just kind of left him alone on yeah. his own. So, <laughs> so. If, you, if you get to see future Trunks, you're like, you're going to be fine, kid. You're, you're fine. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I think Bulma's a really good mom in that way. Mm. So... Then I have, which again, these there's no pictures of these mothers on the covers mostly. So we have Naruto's mom, um, uh, Kushina Usumaki. Mm. Um, all of her stories told in flashbacks because obviously she's not there at the beginning. Um, she's but, not even there till way into the Shippuden part. Yeah, but. The reason why I put her on the list is, like, she made the ultimate sacrifice as a mom. And, like, mm. how can you, like, disregard... I mean, like, she loved her kid so much, she died for him. So, yeah, the, that that gives you some... He didn't know that. That's the sad part. He didn't know that until, <laughs> until you get to Shippuden. But um, that's... I don't... I, you, gotta, you gotta love a mom who's willing to lay down her life for her kids. I mean, mm. that's... Mm. That's that's as much as I have to say about her. Okay. And this one is going to break all your rules because I don't have a specific mom in this one. This is a bride story. While you do have some main characters, you have a lot of side stories, but it's clearly about women getting married. Mm -hmm. And these women getting married all have mothers who are helping to guide their lives in a way... Uh, that they hope is best for them. Mm -hmm. This is another inst this is the same creator as Emma. So this is the same instance of you are bound by the time and uh, time era in which you live, the culture in which you live. So mm -hmm. the women can only be quote unquote, so bold, so independent. Mm -hmm. So there are those restrictions on the, on all of the female characters, but the, every portrayal of a mother with their daughter getting married is just, you know, these mothers trying to do what's best for their family, for their children, and they, they want their daughters to be happy in the marriages that they've formed and all that kind of stuff. So it does break the rule. I'm not picking one particular mother. So, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. Correct me if I'm wrong. A bride mm -hmm. story is still ongoing. Yes. Emma is finished. Emma is finished. Bride okay. story is ongoing. Gotcha. So, yep. And I do think a bride story would make a great gift for your mother. Yeah, this is definitely, I think, again, it's another, you know, you have uh, historical fiction, mm. uh, love and romance, you know, mm. that kind of thing. So, yep. definitely recommended. Yep. Uh, that was all of your honorable mentions? Yep. All right. So, uh, mine are going to be a bit different here. So, I'm actually going to change it up a little bit. I've got a villain as the uh, best mom. But a villain in the way Magneto is a villain. Because you remember how the whole hubbub was in Secret Wars. Magneto was on the good guys team. And they were all like, how is Magneto on the good guys team? And they were like, oh, from his perspective, he's just defending his people and all of that. I guess. There's a lot of villains you could say that for, though. Yeah. Well, and we're going to say that about Rien, who is the, uh, the final boss of uh, Hell's Paradise is a mother and you know most of the things on the island are her doing for her children and it's pretty cool and i don't want to say too much yeah more that's because, one i've got to read so yeah that 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 is the lightest of spoilers i just villain mom i don't know that doesn't seem that it works it works I, I, i'm telling I'll you i'll just it have works. to i'll just have to review that when i read it yeah so uh she barely squeaked in she was my cut Mm -hmm. until you talked me into not picking me. Well, and the reason why Mrs. Ichinose pulled in ahead of her is because like, I don't know if I should put a villain on the list. I see. But then you were like, no, Mrs. Ichinose is like a boring-ass character, so I flipped it. So I won't say too much more for fear of spoilers, but she's awesome, and uh, she made the list. <clears throat> and is she really a bad guy? You know, it's all a matter of perspective. That's all I'm saying. Mm. Oh, we got a repeat. 
Oh, you have your. I have yours, an honorable mention. That's Again, surprising to me. Well, because she's not a biological mother. So I that's get why that, but I'm just that. surprised that you no, like her No, it enough. surprises you because I hate Anya, and I like to trash on Spy Family. But like I always say, I do legitimately like Spy Family. I'm just tired of people not shutting up about it. I don't know. You know, and uh, even though Yor is everywhere, especially with cosplay, because chicks wanted to show their asses on uh, Tic Tac. Um, but that's fine. I like watching them, so it's it's okay. Um, I lost my train of thought. But <laughs> You're for all thinking the reasons, about asses too much? I'm thinking about yours ass too much. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know that probably makes you jealous, and I shouldn't say that in front of my wife, but uh, I would stare at your ass if you did your Oh my cosplay. gosh, just stop now. Just stop now. <laughs> anyway, for all the reasons you mentioned, I have nothing else to add. She's pretty awesome. So, And then... <laughs> My next honorable mention, who would have been at the towards the top of my list if she had been a biological mother. This is the most underrated female character in all of manga, hands down. And that is Chiyoko from Akira. This badass chick with the machine gun right there. Dude, she is you awesome. Love, you have loved her from, like, ever. Dude, she is so awesome. And it is a war crime. It is a violent... Someone go arrest Katsuhiro Tomo right now that he cut her from the anime. Okay? It was one of the biggest crimes in manga history. You, well, you kind of have been yeah. against that the whole time. Yeah. yeah, but she is fucking badass. She's, like, a uh, underground agent. She's a uh, mother figure to Kay. She, uh, you kind of think her and the colonel are going to get together, but she would kick him in the fucking nuts. And she has big old titties too. Like, I'm just saying. Okay. Well, you got, they got to be there to feed the BBs. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh my gosh, shut up. <laughs> you know, that's funny. I, I don't know. You're dying of cringe. I just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So those were all three of my honorable mentions. So now we'll move to uh, our number ones, which are both repeats. Yeah. So I said that the reason why I want to spoil it for the... Everything's uh, messed up. Sorry. Spoil it for the viewers, because we talked about it beforehand, and you've got multiple mothers from this. And I said, uh, yay, Ko, because she's... she parents like the dad i want to be like so why do you like the uh, mothers in a silent voice um i mainly like it because one you're showing single mothers mm -hmm. which when you do see mothers in manga it's typically mom dad you know mm -hmm. they're in the background um i like that they portrayed them in a very realistic way for single mm -hmm. mothers you have they're both working hard they want to know what's happening in their children's lives, but they can't helicopter mom. They can't, like, be constantly in their... Like, with with the light, because of how her family dynamic was, she could be there. She could check on her son constantly, make sure he knew what he was doing. They couldn't do that. Like, right. they did as best they could, especially with um, Shoko's yeah. mom, you know. Mm -hmm. She constantly had to get her new um, hearing, hearing aids. aids and stuff. So, like, they're in their kids' lives. They know oh, what's I, happening. I think I did the math on that, and it was like $17,000 worth of hearing aid damage. Like, look, we're not broke by any means, but it would be extremely difficult for us to come up with seventeen well, grand. Let me put it this way. Keep replacing hearing If aids. we had a kid where the hearing aid was taken... Mm -hmm. And destroyed more than once. Like one time, you could be like, "There's one an accident. time is an accident." An accident. Yeah, Things two happen. times. Is two a times pattern. is like no. Yeah. We are not. The, even on the accident scale, would be like mm. somebody else is paying for that because listen, listen, the kid I, didn't I destroy like to, it. I like to think that a silent voice takes place at a post Columbine uh, school system where you can't just walk on campus. Because if it were, she would have come on campus and punched the shit out of uh, Shoya. Well, okay. Because she is bad. So I know you're you're yeah. liking on her, but honestly, yeah. I like the other. Like if I had to pick between the two, Shoya's mom. I'd like Shoya's mom a little more. No, because look. The only cool thing she does is refuse to cut Shoko's hair the way her mom wants. Well, that's really good too. Yeah. But no, when the mother rips the earring out, mm -hmm. like 
you would think that would be the immediate move is to get into a slap fight, yeah. right? But she's like, no, I know my kid's a snot. I know my kid mm -hmm. did this to your kid, and she took it. Mm -hmm. She's like, I am, I am standing in the place of my son mm -hmm. because... I'm not gonna let my son get hurt. I forgot that she slapped the shit out of Shoya too. It wasn't until later, but yeah. Yeah. She is so bad. So like she yep. she took the place of her son to take the punishment mm -hmm. from the other mother, but it's not like she let her son get away with it. You know, mm -hmm. she still slapped him. She and got if I remember trouble. correctly, it's been a few years, but she like just ran and slapped him. Oh yeah, <laughs> she was mad. She was super mad. Like this isn't yep. like. You know, you're like, oh, single moms let their kids get away. No, like, they're doing the best they can. And yeah. sometimes they just can't be there. And when they find out, they get mad. Mm -hmm. Like, they're like, no, nah, this isn't what I taught you to do. This isn't who I taught you She's to be. She's so badass, she'll slap a minor in the face. And so the thing, but but the thing that really yep. made me really like the mothers in this story was when the two of them got together and actually talked. Mm -hmm. And they were in the house drinking together and the kids come and be like i think she was cutting her hair or, yeah. yeah but they were yeah. drinking too yeah, you know, know they know. were just hanging out and stuff yeah. but it was just like the kids come in and they're like mom what you doing yeah. like you know when you see your moms doing things that you don't expect them to do and they're like i guess my mom's having I, fun i kind of hope i'm secretly hoping for a yuri spinoff where those two moms <laughs> get together but no would be the best like family dynamic ever but, the, but this yeah. is another example of you don't just have one good mother figure in it. You have two good mother figures. Yep. And so that's what that's what makes this really good. It's in there. Again, they're well-rounded women. They're like, yes, they're mothers. Yes, they're taking care of their kids. But they're also they have their jobs. They have like mm -hmm. careers that they are mm -hmm. are trying to oh, do things. And Shoya's mom's also a grandmother. So she's on stage, too. <laughs> she's a grandmother, a business owner. Yeah. I mean, she's. She's on the level. She's got sure. a lot of things. She's uh, she's leaning in. Isn't that thing that y'all girls do? <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to keep up with the feminist propaganda here. Uh, give, give me some credit. I don't know it. I guess I support it, but don't know the words. Yeah. So. Did you have anything to say about Boma? Oh, yeah. Tons. All right, but I on. purposely didn't say it because I didn't. I figured you were kind of waiting. Yeah. So let's let's just go. Let's just state some obvious things that mm. uh, make Bulma kick ass, okay? Uh, first of all, she's a grillionaire. I mean, that is a... Yeah, she's like the richest woman on, on Earth. On the planet, yeah. yeah. her thing. Uh, she's wicked smat, because... Yeah. She's like, she's like the MVP of Dragon Ball. Like, everyone thinks it's Goku, but how many jams could they not have gotten out of if Bulma, in the very first arc, hadn't invented the Dragon Radar? Because the Dragon Radar not only helped them on Earth, it helped them on Namek, and in the multiverse because they could find the Super Dragon Balls with her Dragon Radar. So she's low-key the most important character in the entire book. Uh, with some help from her dad. Yeah, fair, but she invented the Dragon Radar. She did invent own. the Dragon Radar, but like the space stuff, the travel oh, through sure, space. Oh, sure, yeah. He, she did not invent the space, but she invented... Like the training rig that uh, Vegeta blows up all the time. Yeah, that's true. Um, so, so th there's that. Um, she she's married into royalty. Do, at least yeah. we forget she's but, technically a princess. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, maybe even a queen, depending on. There's a big, huge debate on whether or not Vegeta is a prince or a king. But again, if you if you if you're Society requires a coronation. He would still be a prince. That's true. But whatever. So Bulma's royal. She's saying royalty, right? And then, like, we can't get away without talking about trunks. So this is how badass Bulma is, okay? Uh, think of it like Terminator, because it's an open secret that the Terminator is what inspired the uh, Android saga. Really? I yeah. didn't know that. Oh, just look at the similarities I... between... Uh, a rogue person has to come back to warn about androids taking over. Oh, okay. Okay, anyway. Now, imagine what kind of... Imagine Terminator, but instead of Skynet building time uh, travel, Sarah Connor did. And then gave birth to John Connor, who makes Arnold Schwarzenegger look like a pussy. That's Future Trunks. Like, one of the greatest characters in all of Dragon Ball. Right? I... I mean, yeah, but yeah. I don't... How does that make her a great mother? Her, she raises a son who saves humanity. I mean, okay. He saves, like, two timelines. He saves their timeline, 
and his own timeline in uh, Super. Well, no, not really, but okay, whatever. Like, I guess she is I so don't know. Freaking awesome. I, I guess, yes, she is an awesome character, but when mm-hmm. it comes to like being a mother and being awesome, I don't know. That's why she only made my honorable mentions. I guess. I mean, I guess what you're saying, she doesn't get out there with the adventures after she has trunks, but like, she's always finding the Dragon Balls. And she has bigger balls than Vegeta. Who yeah. was the first person to confront Beerus? Yeah. I mean, okay, technically it was Goku, but like, I'm talking about on Earth. She clear, she didn't know, though. She didn't know well, the Even power. if she did know, it wouldn't have mattered. She, I suppose She so. knows later on in the series and still yells at Beerus like he's uh, her kid. That's right? true. Yeah, she's like the ultimate Karen, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but like... <laughs> I mean, actually, that would be Chi-Chi. Uh, maybe. But, like, yeah, Beerus comes down, and Vegeta's all like, mm, mm, mm. And then Chi-Chi's like, no, you are, n-, or, uh, sorry, uh, Bulma's like, you are not going to ruin my party. And she slaps him, and yes, uh, Beerus, like, lays hands on her, and Vegeta freaks out, and blah, blah, blah. But she did it first, not Vegeta, so I'm just saying. Um, I... What? Yeah, I don't I don't know. I, no, I was just thinking about, yeah, I mean... She does kind of keep Vegeta in line too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like she got she... Vegeta to wear pink. <laughs> she got him to stay for the second birth, which is like weird because he had no cares right. for when Trunks was born because right. apparently he was born when Vegeta was off planet and everything. Right, we and he had the opportunity. Super Saiyan. He had the opportunity to leave planet mm-hmm. on her second birth, and he's like, no. Nah. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, is that because, like, that dynamic change where he's like, I care about whether my kid is born or not. I have que- I have questions because it's like, is it because his, they knew it was a girl? Is it because he's connected to Bulma now? Is it because... To be fair, he might not have known about Trunks, right? Because I'm assuming that, like... One night stand kind of they, deal. They did a one night stand and then Vegeta jet off to learn how to become Super I suppose Saiyan. that's true. So he may not. Actually, we know he didn't know because there's a scene in Dragon Ball Z where it clicks in Vegeta's head that Trunks is his son. Yeah, like, that's true. So he didn't know the whole time that she was pregnant and all that. So mm. Okay. You know. So I don't know that I have too much else to No, add. that's, I think, covers yeah. most everything. So... We'll do some channel updates, and the update is we have been horrible about planning. Yeah. So we once again don't know what the next video is going to be. Maybe we'll learn at the last second that a holiday is coming up, and we'll do something <laughs> like that. I think Memorial Day is coming up. We can come up with top five manga with dead soldiers in it. I don't know. Oh, goodness. I'd make it I don't up. know. That doesn't. Yeah. I don't like that one. Yeah, so I don't know. We'll have something in two weeks. So uh, come back. But hey, you know what else would be a good idea for your mom? What's that? Get her both cartridges that Sonic 3 was on. <laughs>